Hi, Bobcats. This video is going to introduce the concept of formal charges and how we can use formal charges to determine what Lewis dot structure is the best one to draw when there's more than one Lewis dot structure possible for a compound. To help us with the concept of formal charges, we also first need to define electronegativity and it turns out it's a periodic property like ionization energy or atomic radius. Um, then we'll see how you calculate the formal charge on an atom in a Lewis dot structure. And then once we know what those formal charges are, we'll see how we use those formal charges to decide which structure is the best representation of a molecule or ion. Electronegativity is a property that an atom exhibits when it is in a bond with another atom, and it, it's a measurement of how strongly that atom pulls the electrons toward itself, um, that the shared electrons, that is. Um, you'll notice on this table that there's an overall trend that as you move towards the upper right corner of this table, um, there the values get bigger. Uh, the biggest value of electronegativity is for fluorine, and it's uh, 4.0. That's the top of the electronegativity scale. Um, the lighter noble gases don't have electronegativities because they don't really form compounds very much. Uh, krypton and xenon are known to form a few, and so there have been some measurements and estimates made of their electronegativities. If we circle back to the concept of a bonding continuum ranging from a pure covalent bond where the electrons are shared evenly through this polar covalent bond where the electrons are unevenly shared to ionic bonding where the electrons are transferred, um, electronegativity helps us determine where on this continuum a uh, bond might lie. If we're going to have evenly shared electrons, the electronegativity of the two atoms has to be the same because then they each pull equally on the electrons that are being shared. But if there's a small difference in electronegativity, we'll have a polar covalent bond because that means that one electron or one atom pulls more strongly than the other atom does, so the electrons spend more time around that. That gives us our unevenly shared electrons. And then if one of these atoms just pulls tremendously harder than the other one does, we'll transfer the electron and that will be an ionic bond. And remember that uh, both pure covalent and polar covalent are considered types of covalent bonds. All right, so now we get to formal charges. Um, there are times for compounds where you can draw multiple good Lewis dot structures for a single compound. They all follow the octet rule. They all seem to, to work well. Uh, they may just, for instance, have lone pairs or uh, multiple bonds in different positions. Oh. Formal charges will help us evaluate which one of those Lewis dot structures is closest uh, to the representation of the real molecule. And here are the two things we're going to look at. The first is that if we're comparing two structures and one of them has formal charges of like zero and plus one and minus one, and the other has formal charges of like minus two and plus two, and the, the size of the charges are bigger. Well, it turns out that the first structure will be better because the smallest uh, formal charges are going to be best when we're comparing two structures. And then another uh, criteria that we're going to use is that whichever atom gets assigned a negative formal charge, um, it should be on the most electronegative element that's present in the compound. All right, so here's how we're going to calculate formal charge. We are going to figure out how many valence electrons an atom has. And then we're going to compare that to the atoms or the electrons that are assigned to it in our Lewis dot structure. Uh, we're going to take half of the number of bonding electrons because half will go to one of the atoms in the bond and the other half will go to the other atom in the bond. And then all of the non-bonding or lone pair electrons will be assigned to that atom. 
if this Lewis dot structure gives an atom its exact same number of electrons as the valence electrons, this difference will be zero and it'll have a zero formal charge. But if our Lewis dot structure gives, it, gives that atom extra electrons, we'll end up with a negative formal charge. And if it's not giving it as many electrons as its number of valence electrons, it will have a positive formal charge. This example uh, will illustrate how we use formal charges to determine which of uh, two possible Lewis dot structures is a better representation. Um, if you look at these two structures, all of the atoms have their octet or their duet. Um, so it gets to be hard to just look at them and decide, ooh, this one's better or that one's better. Um, so let's start calculating formal charges. If you look at hydrogen in both structures, the bonding's identical. So we can't, if, if it's identical, that won't be the basis of a way to discriminate one versus the other. Um, if we look at the nitrogens, it's the same deal. There's one single bond, one double bond, and one lone pair, whether we're talking the first molecule or the second. So we won't come up with any difference for formal charge for the nitrogens. But all four oxygen atoms, we're going to need to calculate their formal charges because both oxygens um, have different formal charges in these two uh, drawings. So if we look at the first um, oxygen or the first structure in its two oxygens, I'm going to just label this as oxygen one and oxygen two. While I'm at it, let's call this one oxygen three and oxygen four, just so we can keep track of these formal charge calculations. With oxygen number one, the formal charge will be equal to its number of valence electrons. Well, oxygen has six valence electrons, and then we're going to subtract from that the electrons that we assign to it in this structure. We'll assign half of the bonding electrons and all of the valence or all of the lone pair electrons. Well, this first oxygen has a grand total of four bonding electrons. Two of those bonding electrons are right here, and two of those bonding electrons are right here. So we'll take one half of those four bonding electrons. We also have to add here in the parentheses all of its lone pair electrons. There are two there and another two there, which is four. Now let's simplify the math here. I'm going to have six minus uh, a half of four is two plus another four which inside the parentheses now we have six, so six minus six is zero. So oxygen number one has a zero formal charge. Let me write that in maybe in a different color so that we can distinguish that. So right here on this oxygen, we're going to have a formal charge of zero. Now, if we take a look at oxygen number two, its formal charge will be given by its valence electrons, six, and then we're going to subtract half of its bonding electrons. Well, it has four bonding electrons, so one half of four, and all of its lone pair electrons. Well, it has four lone pair electrons, and so that'll be six minus two plus four, which again, two plus four is six, so this is six minus six, which is equal to zero. So this second oxygen also has a formal charge of zero. Now let's take a look at the bottom molecule and oxygen number three. Um, if we're going to calculate its formal charge, we're going to take its number of valence electrons, which is six, and then half of its bonding electrons. Well, it's involved in three bonds, which is six bonding electrons, and it also has two lone pair electrons. So if we do that math, we're going to have six minus um, three plus two. So six uh, minus five is going to be a plus one. So this uh, oxygen number three has a formal charge of plus one. And then for oxygen number four, we're going to take its number of valence electrons, which was six, and subtract half of its bonding electrons. So well, it has one bond, so that's two bonding electrons, and all of its lone pair electrons, which there are six of them. So if we simplify this, we're going to have 6 minus 1 plus 6. 
So inside the parentheses, that's 7. 6 minus 7 is minus 1. So the formal charge on oxygen number 4 is minus 1. So if we're going to determine which Lewis dot structure is better, we want to go with that second structure um, because I, I'm sorry, the, the, the second structure is not better because it has bigger formal charges. The first structure has smaller formal charges of zero, whereas the second uh, structure has formal charges of plus one and minus one. And this correlates very well with um, that um, uh, those guidelines from a video or two ago where um, I mentioned that oxygen likes to have two bonds um, because in the second structure, which is not as good, oxygen uh, number three actually has three bonds. Um, so this uh, formal charge argument, which is pretty rigorous, uh, correlates very well with those guidelines, which are, um, those guidelines aren't always going to work, but most of the time they will. So in this video, we defined electronegativity. If this is a rough outline of the periodic table, the biggest values for electronegativity are found in that upper right corner. Uh, of course, we ignore the lighter noble gases that don't really form compounds. Um, for calculating formal charge, we're going to take the number of valence electrons on an atom and subtract away half of its bonding electrons and all of its uh, lone pair electrons. And then when we're trying to decide which structure is the better representation, we want the one that has the smaller formal charges present and the one that puts the negative formal charges onto the more electronegative element.